I put this shirt on with a collar, so I'm glad to see that, that you're wearing a T-shirt. You're, I'm going to unbutton another button so I'm just relax a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, Dr. Atchison, thank you so much for taking time to uh, talk with me today. Um, you're, you look like you're kind of uh, in a very comfortable place today. Where are you in the world? I'm at uh, I'm in my home office in Northwest Montana, about 50 miles from Glacier Park, and blue sky and trees and grizzly bears and mountain lions and I don't know which is worth COVID-19 or mountain lions, but I'll take the mountain lions, frankly. Yeah, I think I'd I'd take my chances with a mountain lion. Um, now, when we we talk about COVID, you you certainly are well versed on the subject. Um, you have a have a, a, an amazing background. You're the founder and CEO of the Atchison Group, also known as TAG. Uh, right. you, you're intimately familiar with the USDA, the FDA, and I'm sure you've taken a temperature or two in your time. Um, Just a few. Right. So, um, and uh, honestly, in doing some research for the show, I, I came across an interview that you gave and uh, was just very intrigued by your um, kind of a, a very straightforward approach to, to what's happening in the world. Um, especially as it comes in, into the world of packaging, uh, food packaging in particular. Um, what concerns do you feel like are on the minds of consumers as it relates to food and food packaging? That's a really good question. And I think that yeah, the main concerns that consumers have is, is just they don't know. Um, you know, we have some science about the way this virus is behaving. Um, we've got some science about how long it will survive and, you know, will it, will it survive in food? Will it infect you via food? Can you get it off packaging? Um, you know, on the one hand, we're saying, wash your hands. If you touch, if you touch a surface, and that would include packaging, it would include a cardboard box, anything. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you touch a surface and then you touch your nose or your mouth or your eyes, you could trans, transfer the virus from the surface to your face and, and get infected. I, you know, that's absolutely true. Um, so in that sense, any packaging one, could, one should consider has potentially got virus on it because you don't know where it's been unless it's been sitting in your, in your car or your garage for the last week. Um, so, so, you know, our practical advice is, is don't take the risk. If you've touched something that you don't know the history of for the last several days and it's been sitting in your house and it's perfectly safe, wash your hands before you do anything else it's just it's just a prudent wise thing to do irrespective of what it is whether it's food packaging or cardboard box with anything in it, it doesn't matter right I, th I think that's very um that's kind of that's calming advice honestly um because COVID-19 certainly um is nasty um but yeah. it's it's kind of the same advice that that you would tell someone anyway like wash your hands don't touch your face because uh, in the interview I read, you, you said something like, it's not like this virus is sitting and waiting to jump on your face. It's not going right. to leap into your nose. Yeah. Just wash your hands and keep your fingers away from your face. No, you're right. I mean, the, the virus is not going to multiply on a surface. The only time the virus is going to multiply is when it gets inside a cell, you know, a human cell or maybe in an animal cell. I mean, we don't know a whole lot about what it's doing in animals, but... It has to get inside a living organism, like a mammal of some kind, for it to, to multiply and, and to grow. Um, so when it's sitting on a surface, it isn't gonna leap off the surface, you're right. It isn't gonna grow on the surface. I mean, we're all very familiar in the food world of you know, what, what does salmonella do? What does listeria do? It's like, oh, well, if you don't keep things at the right temperature, the bugs will grow. Mm -hmm. um, this doesn't do that. Mm. It's pretty wimpy. You just leave it on the surface, it's going to fizzle out, it's going to go away in a couple of days. But you're right. I mean, the fundamental message to everybody, whether you're in the food industry or what you are, is, is, is this, this is a person-to-person -person transmission thing. So somebody puts it on a surface, you touch that surface, wash your hands. That's the whole point of social distancing as well, in terms of not spreading it from a person to a person through a cough or a sneeze, or just simply talking to somebody. Um, now, along those lines, it, again, that's, that's very straightforward. It doesn't sound like earth-shattering advice. It sounds like very practical advice that has been around. Um, mm -hmm. How does that translate into like packaging suppliers? Are there 
Are there some tips or approaches that they can take um, when they're, I mean, because there's supply chains all around the world. There are packages going across the, the ocean now, across the country. Um, right. Are there a few high level best practices that packaging suppliers can be aware of? Well, you, you, you're going you're gonna to hate me here, Kevin, because I'm going to beat the same old drum. You know, it's like somebody, I was, doing a, a, I was doing a webinar earlier today and somebody said to me, well, if we get a package, uh, you know, a cardboard package, and it was in the context of a facility, a plant, um, should we leave it on the, on the receiving dock for three days to let the virus die? And I said, well, sure, you can do that. But when you come and handle it, how do you know that the person who moved it three feet across the packaging dock didn't have coronavirus on their hands? They may be perfectly well, but they could be asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. um, they may have coughed into their hands, just clearing their throat. They got virus, they put it on the package. And you're thinking, well, it sat there for three days, as well as the six months on the ship from wherever it came from. I'm fine. No, you're not. You know, the whole point is you don't know when it got contaminated. Was it three weeks ago? You're fine. Was it five minutes ago? You don't know. Yeah. So when, you, when you touch those things, the special precautions, here I go again, wash your hands before you touch your face. I mean, it really is, you're right. In, in the essence, it's simplicity that is shutting this virus down. Do you think, um, obviously, there, there are best practices that... Um, companies try to, to handle, you know, they uh, try, you know, if somebody's sick, they tell them to go home. That happened before COVID-19. Um, but do you, do you feel like the industry was prepared for something like this? Or is it just there's so much talk, so much news that everybody thinks that it's, um, uh, that it is going to jump off surfaces or it's going to burn down buildings or it's going to steal your credit card information? Well, we were all unprepared for this, Kevin. I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody, if they're honest with themselves, could say, "Oh, yeah, we were prepared for that." I mean, there have been pandemic what ifs studies done, and and um, you know, people say, "Well, what if we got a pandemic? What would we do?" And it's you know, it's like an academic study, and you know, you don't have to be watching the news for five minutes before some before somebody says. Oh, well, you know, you did a study and you should have ordered those 50,000 ventilators because somebody told you. Right. Now, and you're looking at a finite budget and say, so, well, am I going to stick 50,000 50, ventilators in mothballs for the next 50 years, hoping? <laughs> right. Not, of course not. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, it's so easy when we look backwards and say, oh, yeah, we should have done, done things differently. You know, I think as, as an industry, as a society, we're actually handling this remarkably well. Yes, there's a lot of worried people. Um, I mean, the economics of, of what's happening are the likes of which we've never seen. Um, and, you know, it, but, but everybody in the, in the food industry, the packaging industry, pretty much is part of critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is maintenance of that flow with, with its challenges. But, you know, were we prepared? No. Are we working our way through it? effectively all things considered yeah i mean i really think we are mm -hmm. when through sharing information through understanding what's going on i think the other key message here on the, on that note is every day we learn something new about this virus um if you remember when it first broke the the media or the message was oh it's just like influenza mm -hmm. and no it's not it's not behaving like influenza yes it causes a, resp a respiratory type illness um, but aside from that, it's, it, it, it behaves in, in, in quite a bit of different ways in terms of its infectivity during asymptomatic time, i.e. you've got the virus, um, but you don't know it and you're capable of spreading it. All of, so it really isn't acting like influenza. It's doing different things. Well, again, I've, this is probably beating that same drum, but I, but I feel like this is important information. Um, are there words that you can offer our viewers, uh, people, um, not just in the packaging industry, but people that are at home who, who get packages? You know, Amazon trucks are still rolling around. The Postal Service is still rolling around. Um, is there practical advice that you can offer them to just kind, kind of ease some anxiety when a package shows up on their door? Um, right. What, right. What's, what's, a, what's practical advice for um, uh, us now as we're engaging more in e-commerce and we're receiving packages at home? No, that's a, that's a really good question. You know, and I think um, 
if you if you're confident that what you've been doing for yourself um, has has given you a high level of safety. I mean, personally, I haven't been out. I haven't been anywhere other than than the yard for the like the last two and a half weeks. So I'm pretty confident that that we don't have coronavirus looking around in our home. Right. Um, but we get packages almost daily mm-hmm. from somebody, and um, you then have to you have a number of options. You can leave it sitting around. Obviously, if it's got perishable goods in it, you're not going to do that. <laughs> um, if you've got an antimicrobial spray, spray it. I mean, it it it's it's only going to do a little extra good. Um, you know, leave that antimicrobial spray on for a little bit, so it's going to have a chance to knock down any virus should there be any on it. And you and you basically don't know. You can't see it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you come to handle the package, do as we've been saying. You know, make sure that when you've handled it and you open it, um, you you deal with the contents the same way, um, and and you and you wash your hands before you touch anything else or before you do anything else. So we're back to those those simple instructions of, of 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 what to do, but the challenge is is just remembering to do it. It's so like not in our culture to think mm-hmm. everything we touch. I hate to say it, but could have a deadly virus on it. I mean, if you're if you're immune susceptible or you know you're high risk, it is a deadly virus. We, we're not messing about with this thing. Right. Um, and and as a as a culture, we're just we're not attuned to thinking that way at all. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's it is a cultural shift. It is, and I think also along the lines of a cultural shift, we're so used used to feeling freedom, um, the freedom to do what we want, and I, and I feel like that's uh, a lot of the reasons that there have been a lot of these stay at home orders and. Um, you know, the issue issuances from um, local authorities to stay home because people are like, nah, you know, I'll be fine. I, I want to go to the store. Or I want to go to, I want to go to Target or I want to go wherever. And right. I, I think part of the, the biggest sting is we, we feel like our freedom is being infringed upon when really it's, um, it just comes down to common sense. You know, don't hang out with people. Don't, and everything you've just been talking about, I, I even heard someone describe it as um, think of think of it as glitter. You know, mm-hmm. if somebody has ever sent you a birthday card and they've <laughs> they put glitter in the envelope, you open it and it is everywhere. Everywhere, mm-hmm. and it, it's in your laundry, it's in your mouth, it's in the bathtub. You don't even know how it got there. It just it's everywhere. So yeah, you know, think of this virus is is like glitter. So you know, feel feel like you're a free human. That's fine, but think of this virus as glitter and everything you touch. It's all over you, and and uh, so treat it like that. Wash your hands diligently. Is is it like twenty seconds under warm water? Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, sing happy birthday twice, yeah. and um, you know, and and again, the, just to sort of build off of that, this this virus is is not a strong bug. It mm-hmm. it, it doesn't. Some of the viruses we deal with that we hear about in the news, like norovirus, which was kind of the original cruise ship virus that causes diarrhea and vomiting. Right. Now, that, that is a tough little virus. Um, it's yeah. still a virus. It isn't going to grow sitting on a surface. But, man, does it, it, it can hang around for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Wow. Um, this virus doesn't do that. It, 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 it sort of curls up and dies fairly quickly, certainly relative to norovirus. But you're right. You know, it's it's this this concept of social distancing, of staying home. It's just it's a complete antithesis to what we've grown up with forever. Yeah. Um, other cultures are more used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's sort of uh, if, if 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 you've ever been to Asia, you see people with face masks on all the time. I mean, right. it's just it's a societal norm to do that. When somebody's not feeling well, they put a face mask on. You never see a face mask in North America ever, mm-hmm. um, and I I would suspect you know when we all come out of our burrows and get out there, you're <laughs> going to see face masks pretty regularly for the next several months as 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 people are, you know, as we're sort of getting back used to it, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, and that's certainly a concern that if we if we expose ourselves too fast until we this is under control and forget about what we're talking about here, Kevin. Forget about the hand washing. Forget about the social distancing. Forget about the, the large groups. Mm-hmm. If we forget too quick, 
then my fear is that the flattening of the curve and all the good news we're seeing on the numbers will be undone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll get an uptick of cases and we'll get more panic. And the last thing we need is, is to emerge and then have to go back into our boroughs. That would be a bad thing. Yeah, it, it really would. Cause you feel like you, you want to keep um, moving forward, even if it's an inch at a time, you're still moving forward. And um, right. it wouldn't take much to undo that. And for all of us to have that harsh reminder again, hey, keep your distance, maybe have a mask on, limit all the, the large group activity, things like that. Right. Um, in, in closing here, um, it, it seems like this, this whole time you just kind of kept it back uh, to the basics and um, you know, I know that there's a waterfall of news that people sit under every day, you know, the, the COVID-19, what it's doing. Um, do you have any recommendations for like us as like the public to, you know, when we're consuming this information, is there, um, is there a source, is there a good source that we can go to to get like true medical information um, that's not so maybe panic or fear driven uh, that can just inform instead of, maybe cause fear? Yeah. Um, well, well, certainly if you, if, you know, to go the other way, Kevin, if you, if you read media outlets, you're, you're going to see a spin. Mm -hmm. um, and sad to say that it doesn't matter what, what media you read, somebody's got an angle that they're trying to play some way. They either want to play it up or they want to play it down, depending on the mood of the day. Yeah. So I find those to be interesting sources of, of new science, but rather than reading the media interpretation of that, try to go back to the original source mm -hmm. to the extent that you can. Um, you know, whatever you may think of the Centers for Disease Control and how well they've reacted to that, generally the material they have on there is good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is unbiased. It is, it is a distillate of the science translated into generally fairly easy to read information on 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 you know on the what's and the why's and the where's um you know we, we have at, at at my company um a website that we update every day mm -hmm. um and it is centered towards the food industry but there's a lot of good stuff on that um and anybody who's interested can sign up for daily updates and you'll get a little a little email every day with okay what's changed what's new what are we doing differently well, we all eat food, so we have that in common. <laughs> we, we all eat food, exactly. Right, right, right. But, um, you know, there's, there are, you know, some state of Minnesota puts out a really nice update too. So mm -hmm. there are definitely some good sources that don't have a spin. They're, mm -hmm. they're genuinely trying to digest all, as you say, this, this waterfall of, of data mm -hmm. and, tr and try and sort out what's, what's relevant. And more importantly, what drives a different behavior? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what am I doing today that, that a week from now I'll be doing something different? And I'm doing it today because I believe it's the right thing based on the science. Absolutely. Then something changes. Right. And, you, you know, you need to stay up, stay up to speed with that stuff because it is changing. And I, I think that that good information can help um, keep us calm. Like we have a phrase here that we adopted at the packaging school is keep calm, carry on, and wash your hands. And that's just... <laughs> just right. Very simple, straightforward information. And, and for you to even say that as far as viruses go, it's kind of a wimpy virus. I think that's kind of refreshing to hear. I mean, I know it certainly has uh, devastated the globe and it, and it is, it's taken people out. It's, it's shut down cities. But when you look at the facts, uh, it's, it's a wimpy virus that can't survive. So if we do those simple common sense things, mm -hmm. then then we don't have to go through what, unfortunately, a lot of people have had to endure. Yeah, and, and to put that comment in context, when I say, you know, a wimpy virus, and you only have to look at the, at, at the mortality and the numbers of people in hospital, and people say, what does he mean, a wimpy virus? Look what it's doing to us. Right. Um, so in the context of compared with other viruses, it, it, it isn't a tough one. It isn't a survivor. Mm -hmm. But what it's doing and the fact that we generally have got no immunity to it unless you've had it, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it can have a devastating consequence. So while it's wimpy and controllable through the simplest techniques that we've discussed of hand washing and, and avoiding touching face and stuff, um, 
if, you, if we do all of those things, we're going to come out of the other side of this um, in, in a much better place. And, um, you know, ultimately this, this will go away. Um, but, you know, final thought is, is we should learn from this. You asked me a little earlier, have we, um, were we prepared? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think everybody would say, nah, not as, not as well as we should have been or could have been. Um, so, you know, let's, let's learn from this so that um, when we get another, and if we look back at history, Kevin, we've had SARS, mm -hmm. we had, this, this is the fifth or sixth coronavirus that's emerged in the last decade or so. Um, none of them have been nearly as bad as this, but we'll get another. The, the, this isn't the last time with global travel and global movement that this is going to happen. And, and while we need to survive this one and get out the other side, we absolutely need to reflect on what have we learned from this? What should we do differently as a society to, um, to, to manage the emergence of another one of these? Mm -hmm. uh, well, those are, those are good words, um, sobering, calming, uh, and true words. And um, I just want to thank you so much for your time. Thanks for, for coming in from the, your beautiful outdoors there around your house. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I just, I imagine you looking out your window and seeing elk and grizzly bear and trout and salmon, just all in, in one field of vision there. Um, I, I wish I could get outside and do that, but, uh, but sadly, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people that want to talk and get help. So I'm very happy to be part of, uh, part of this conversation. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. Well, you enjoy the rest of your day and uh, you and your family stay safe and hope to talk to you sometime soon. Absolutely. You too. Thank you.